grill me now? Yeah. No. You're like, in this scene, her bracelet was on the left of her. In that scene, yeah. <laughs> I want to know how you managed to give them all such deep storylines. Oh. You're not letting Thank one fall behind. It's just a big, like, you know those people who can, like, spin plates on sticks? <laughs> but, like, I can't wait till the day it all comes crashing down and you're, like, asterisks to my question. <laughs> just, I just, uh, um, I just really love all the characters. And I think on a show that is maybe a little bit of an underdog show like R does, I always say, like, we have, like, Game of Thrones, like, kind of veggie budget. Do you know what I mean? For the entire run of our show. Um, you really need character to be consistent and be developed and act in character. I think that's like my one rule. I have like no rules in writing. I'll try it all. My writers kind of know that. But I'm like, I really think the character needs to act the way dolls would act versus the way Waverly would act. Even if it makes story harder or the challenge is harder, I think the audience has bought into that. That's kind of the covenant you've made with the audience. So I'm, I'm, I just like my characters three-dimensional. I think it's just so much more rich, you know? So... Thank God we don't have a cast of thousands. That would be a nightmare. No, no, no. You arrive for the blast. It's so <laughs> yeah. you skipped, Thank God you skipped Tim Rose on. Nightmare. Oh, I know. Nice to see you. How you doing? Yeah. This is probably one of the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How do you portray me? You're very much. How do you portray your writing? Um, I just tricked everybody. Like, I honestly just kind of, like, threw so many female characters and, like, Lucado just didn't have a first name and then, like, you cast it as a woman, you just cast it as a woman. Um, I really think Sci-Fi, the network, deserves credit. They have not once said to me, like, can you tone it down with the vagina talk? Like, I, um, I think genre, as a rule, is really inclusive, right? Since the time of Star Trek, you know, certainly hopeful genre, portrays a world that we want to live in, and that celebrates diversity and inclusion. So I almost think it's easier in genre to kind of comment on that stuff. Um, and really, I didn't pull any punches. Like, when I pitched the show, I was like, I want to do a Western, but with all the traditional male characters as women. So I don't feel like I've tripped anybody. Um, I don't know, it's just really important to me. I've never written on a show without a female protagonist. It's just kind of been my privilege in, a, in my writing life. Um, and uh, I feel like it's kind of my jam. So, <laughs> it's working out. I hope. Oh, yeah. So, uh, leading up to the Game Changer episode, yes. there's a lot of plan B jokes. Are you dropping those as soon Oh, yeah, constantly. Well, also just to make Melanie Scorpetta laugh her head off in the read through, because she doesn't read the script ahead of time. So, like, she's got a good, like, dirty sense of humor. So, like, Definitely the pregnant lady is going to like a good abortion or plan to so, um, so yeah, a little bit. I really though wanted to keep it a secret, so I didn't do a lot of the traditional stuff you see on shows with like, there was no morning sickness or like, you know, I tried to keep it as steady as it happened because I really wanted it to be as big a surprise for writing as it was for the fans. It is honestly a miracle in this day and age we kept that a secret though. Like, it's funny too, like for our younger fans, um, obviously I'm only 24, no, but I just remember like in my day in the cave with my dinosaur, um, we didn't have the internet, so like we didn't get spoilers, but I feel like spoilers are so much a part of everyday culture, and if you're a rabid fan, it's hard to avoid them, right? You think you want to know even though you might not want to. So what an amazing gift for the audience that so many of the fans were surprised, we were all in it together when we found out, and also what a testament to the cast and crew that everybody kept it quiet. Like it just speaks to the love we have on set and the respect we have for Melanie, I think, that everybody just really took it seriously. But Sure, I wanted to do it, but I didn't actually think we'd pull it off, so... The, the decision, excuse me, to make the pregnancy progression so quick in that one episode, oh, yeah. like, was that always the plan to get her from point A to point B? Nothing was always the plan, because once the pregnancy happened, you're like, ah! Oh. Um, <laughs> but, um, honestly, when we did the math of how far along this was, we're like, and of course, she still looks amazing, but we're like, she is seven months here, so... Like, she gave birth 
four days after we packed. So it was like a miracle we made it. Which is also part of the reason we knew we had to incorporate the pregnancy. Because we're like, she's nine months, but this isn't a sitcom. I just can't have her holding an increasingly large series of laundry baskets. You know, like, she, I want her to kick some ass. So um, I was proud of that episode. I mean, it's a bit of a supernatural genre trick, but it was all done in good faith. And like, if you know that trope, I hope you get that it's a little bit of a wink. So, um, yeah, it was fun. And also, like, to be honest, just talking about the type of character Winona is, She's like single, she's a, you know, a borderline alcoholic. Do I think she would keep the baby if she had a choice with the fate that in her bear? No, and as a feminist show, I think that choice needs to be put on the table. But I also think so much of the theme of the show is like, she destiny keeps screwing over Winona and not giving her a choice, but every day she gets up and she's like, I'm still going to fight to make the choice out wherever I can. So it all kind of came together. Plus a sad man. <laughs> yeah. Have you thought about season three, or are you sure, kind of wait? Possibly. But like, if we get a season three, I will have like a minute of elation, and then like immediate panic, right? Which is like, as soon as you lose that fear as a writer, you're dead. Every season, I look back at the season before, and I'm like, how did past Emily do that? I don't remember how to do that. So, yeah, I'll keep telling these stories as long as y'all let me. And even if you try to stop me. I'll show up inside my store and be like, here are the scripts. They'll be like, oh, we didn't know this. <laughs> you worked on Lost Girl. You had to move around. Yes, Lost Girl. You hear me in a She's on the screen. She was. You know, the, the slight difference with Lost Girl is Anna was just pregnant in the finale. So, like, she wasn't showing. She had the baby between seasons, and then she just needed a bit of time at the beginning of the next season. So certainly I wasn't a stranger um, to working around pregnancies, but this was like the full kit and caboodle. Like, God bless Melody, but the time it could not have been more crazy. So, um, you know, I think that's the truth that you have to put your money where you're at, because I've had two kids in this industry. When you cast actresses of a certain age, sometimes people are going to have kids. So you just need to be prepared to honor those commitments. If you say you're a feminist, I think you have to try to figure it out. Please don't let Dom and Pat get pregnant. I'm just saying that, just in case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just gonna, yeah. Challenge accepted. Do so we expect any surprise pairings by the end of the season? You can, yes. <laughs> and, and, and on all cliffhanger endings from here on out. It's crazy. You really brought it last night. That was nothing. That was a soft landing. Yes. Yes, I would say so. I think the cast is so strong. One of my favorite things to do is I like exploring weird relationships. I want to know what Dolph the Killer is like or, you know, Doc and Nedley. I, I like to do it all and the cast is so strong. I feel like that's really fun, you know, to put two characters together and be like, okay, Workplace, what are they like without Wynona? You know, like yeah. And we'll be spending a little time exploring some backstories too. Yeah, I think so. Next episode, for sure, we learn a little bit more about the Burp Purse um, through a very interesting device. And of course, we have to figure out if Waverly's really in her or not. So, yes. Sexy backstory. <laughs>